What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be installing an air fuel ratio gauge on the truck. Now, I'm pretty sure everyone knows what it is, but for those of you who don't know, what this gauge does is there's a sensor that goes into your exhaust, and essentially what it reads is the fumes coming out of your engine, uh, whether you're running too rich or too lean, and it kind of just helps you dial in your tune. Now this is simply just a gauge, so it tells you what it's seeing, but it doesn't actually change anything. So there is some out there that will actually adjust your tune. Uh, if it's running too rich and you want it in a certain parameter, it leans it out or vice versa. Um, now this one, you could wire into your ECU, but I'm running the stock ECU, so it probably won't work. It's more of just for me telling me what's going on. Now I went with the AEM because of the fact that they are a reputable company for making gauges. Now you could get other companies, but in my opinion, with an air to fuel ratio gauge, you want it to be as precise as possible and AEM is known for that. Now when doing a budget turbo build like I am, there is some things that you can't always go on a budget with and this is one of those things that I wouldn't recommend going on a budget. I'd recommend just spending the money where it's needed and it won't ever fail on you and it'll give you precise numbers and you won't ever have to worry about anything else. As far as turbo, intercooler piping, exhaust stuff, all that stuff you can cheap out on but this is the one thing, one of the things I should say that I wouldn't cheap out on. Now I'm gonna quickly unbox it, that way you guys can see what exactly comes in here. This is the kit, so it comes with the sensor, the bung, it comes with everything you need. Now you could get the gauge itself, the sensor itself, the bung itself, you can get everything sold separately, but this is a kit and it comes with everything. I already ripped the tape, but uh, here you go. You got your air slash fuel ratio right there. Goes all the way from eight to 20. There's different modes and stuff like that. I'll show you guys once I have everything hooked up. But now, that's just the gauge right there. That's not really, yeah, that's important, but I just wanna show you guys. You flip it over, and this is where all the other stuff is, at the bottom. There you go, you get a sticker for spending 200 and something dollars on a gauge. So that's, that's pretty cool, it's your instructions get this and right here you have the latest wideband sensor that they have on the market right now now the threads do come with anti-c so be very careful not to touch that because if you get that on your hands you're gonna get it everywhere but now over here we have some uh, crimps we have the bung that you weld into your exhaust now I already got one welded into my exhaust so I won't have to worry about this but uh, you could weld this into your exhaust if you don't have one if you got a custom exhaust, they come with one. So I'm probably gonna be using this for the next exhaust that I'm making, uh, since what I'm running right now is kinda just jank just to get it, the truck to not be as loud. And then I'm gonna be making a full exhaust from the turbo back, so that'll go into that, which is perfect. Now it comes with two harnesses. This one plugs into the sensor right here, and then it plugs into the back of the gauge. This is what heats up the sensor and gets all the data from the sensor to the gauge. And then over here you have another harness, which wires into pretty much wherever you want uh, but this is what gives the gauge itself the power and also the sensor since the sensor needs to be heated up from the looks of it the only real plugs that you need is a switch power to obviously power up everything and a ground first step is going to be to install the wideband sensor itself now i already have one in there since i threw that on in order to cover the hole because i didn't want to have a huge exhaust leak right there so i just threw that on and if you follow it it's not connected to anything it's just sitting there um, so that's a good one but i'm going to use this brand new one um, in place of that one so i'm going to quickly remove that one and throw this one on now the sensor over here what i did is i plugged it in right here like i mentioned i'm going to have the plug inside of the engine bay uh, but what I did is I put it behind the brake booster and down through here. Now it was kind of a tight fit right here, but uh, this should keep it from being uh, straight from the heat. Uh, I am going to be wrapping all this and probably making a little heat shield, so that should be pretty safe. So what I got going on right now is I have the gauge hooked up to a power and a ground. Now my power, I got the switch from the radio. Uh, when you turn the key on, it gives it a 12 volt source and therefore powering up the radio. So I just uh, tapped it into that. That way whenever I turn the key off, this thing also turns off. When I turn the key on, it turns on. Now for the ground, I just got this bar right here. That's not a good ground, but I just wanted to see uh, everything and set it up before I actually 
install it. The more modern uh, AEM gauges that are coming out, they're pretty much ready to go. You just have to wire them up and throw them on. You don't really have to calibrate them or anything like that. Now you can, that's what all these modes right here are. Um, right now, it's reading this, which is past 20. That's why it's not showing an actual number because it is extremely lean and that is because it's just outside. So it's reading the ambient air, which is just completely lean. It's only oxygen and there is no carbon in it. And then one more thing you have to do before you install the actual sensor into the exhaust is you have to power it up and let it do a full heating cycle. So uh, you'll see it right here. It'll add up little tabs and then once it's fully heated up for the first time, then you can put it into your exhaust and start to uh, read what it is. And there we go. Now it's uh, warming up right now, so it's still cold and it's just idling, so it's uh, running pretty lean. Sorry for the blue lights, but that's all I have in here and it's already dark. Uh, but yeah, the gauge is working, everything is good to go. Now I didn't know it was gonna be this easy, but all I had to do was hook up a switch 12 volt and a ground and then everything else is pretty much plug and play except for the sensor that you have to weld in now if you don't know how to weld you could take your downpipe to someone and have them weld it um, where you want it or you can do it yourself with a little harbor freight welder and call it a day it doesn't have to be that good as long as there is no leaks yeah it's already dark but uh yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, found it useful if you guys have any questions you guys already know what to do feel free to dm me on instagram or comment down in the comment section below and i'll answer them to the best of my abilities now I will be uploading a video as far as how to hook up a boost gauge uh, in case anyone else wants to uh, see how to do that. Once I do that, then I'll be making a center console piece down here, a uh, custom one to hold my gauges and my SAFC and all my little stuff. That way my gauges aren't just flying around everywhere. Also that, and I'm gonna be tucking up all this wiring up under the dash. I'm just gonna wrap it around, do some zip ties, and toss it under the dash and zip tie it to something that way it's out of the way, out of the pedals, and I can't rip them out whenever I'm drifting or beating on the truck.